it's an exciting day, and uh, it's always exciting when we have a baptism. Baptism is uh, a special time of declaration. So biblically speaking, it's when someone declares to the world, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. So it's not for salvation. It's not really a religious activity that checks any boxes, but it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to praise the Lord together for the transformation that's happened in one's heart. And we'll start with Sean. We'll have four baptisms in this service and one in the next service. So I am going to uh, read Sean's testimony. I had the privilege of meeting him several weeks ago, I think the second week that I was here, and it's been amazing to see his hunger for the Lord. So in his own words, he states, the only way I can describe my life before I met Jesus is I was lost in myself. I tried to control my life in all the wrong ways and found pleasure in all the wrong things. These things held no true reward and pushed me further from the truth, which is Jesus Christ. One day I prayed to the Lord and kept my eyes and ears open. And I saw and heard the most beautiful messages that Jesus loved me no matter what that he will always be there for me and that he will never leave me. He didn't just tell me I am his, but he also told me he will always be mine. Since then, I've loosed the reins on my own life and grown to trust my Lord Jesus. I know now I am never truly alone and can confide in my savior, brother, and best friend. I am proud to have Jesus as my family and so thankful for the sacrifice he made so that I can live life in this new and grand way and continue to worship him. As John the Baptist said, make straight the way for the Lord, the way of the Lord, and surely you will see me follow. Sean says, surely I will follow the way of the Lord. So follow him up here. So Sean, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Yes, I love you, Jesus. Uh, so I baptize you, Sean, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. church come on boo we're baptizing two spiritual sons today amen amen who's first is it Tyler which one Tyler Angel front flip let's go front flip I'm joking no let's jump on in here yeah. cool all righty Samantha is gonna read your testimony okay good morning church um, so this is in the actual words of Angel, and the first word is yo. So, <laughs> Yo, my name is Angel Ortega. I grew up in San Diego. My childhood had its share of challenges. My parents weren't Christians, so I didn't have good, firm role models. My mom going to prison and me living with my dad and his girlfriend and his son, who I had to pretty much raise when I was a kid myself, I was an angry kid until my mom came back from prison and became a dope Christian who helped us, me and my sisters, get to know God. A pivotal moment came a few years ago when my mom went to a church and there was a dope couple there named Leroy and Sam who changed my life insanely. It was exactly what I needed to help me grow closer to God. I had so many questions about God. I didn't know how to love him, feel his love or love him. Leroy and Samantha became my guides in life and offering their teachings, guidance, love, and unwavering support. I remember learning from them and falling more in love with God. Thanks to their influence and knowledge, I've grown stronger in my faith. They're the only people I can think of when someone asks me, what does a good Christian look like? Good gracious angel, thank you. 
I've learned to discern the Lord's will for my life, and I strive to share the message of Christ with others. So Angel, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. Today I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, one more. Tyler, we're gonna hold you down for like three minutes, come on. <laughs> awesome. Let's give it up for Tyler. And Samantha's gonna read his testimony. <laughs> it says, hi, I'm Tyler. I didn't grow up in a home where God was a frequent topic of conversation. After I lost my father and grandmother at a young age, and my mom being in and out of prison, I hit rock bottom. I bounced from house to house because I was always fighting with family. This burned many bridges, which left a void that I tried to fill with negative influences, like drinking, drugs, and hanging out with the wrong crowd. School became an afterthought as I struggled with academics and my behavior. My actions and behavior put me in tough situations, even to the point of juvenile hall at one point. I struggled with the mental pressure of feeling abandoned by my family and thinking there was no one there for me. Thankfully, about six months ago, a friend reached out to Leroy who offered me help and a place to stay. With Leroy and Samantha's guidance, I've turned my life around. I've left my old habits behind, changed my circle of friends, and have learned to walk with God, truly walk with God. I've developed a love for reading the Bible, discerning the Lord's voice, and learning all I can about the Lord. From doing soap journals to learning various Bible topics, I've grown and become strong in my faith. Being a part of Leroy and Samantha's spiritual family, along with my newfound brothers and sisters, has transformed me for the better. My life is finally filled with joy and happiness, having found a family that will help me become the best I can be. I truly have found peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm now looking forward to a future filled with a loving family and a strong connection with the Lord. I understand that baptism is an outward declaration of my decision to follow Christ, and I'm thrilled to share this moment with all of you, including friends and family that have traveled here to be here with me today. Amen. Tyler, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yeah. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Trey, and uh, I'm going to be reading Orion's testimony. Here we go. All right. Um, At times I felt lonely, as if the world itself just wasn't kind or was against me even. I've always known God was with me, comforting me through it all. I was brought up in the faith. My grandparents instilled God into both my, of my parents, which was honestly the best thing they could have done for me and the rest of my family. And if it weren't for the strength of my parents' faith, I wouldn't have been able to build the relationship I have with God as soon as I did. Now I, now I would have gotten there, of course, but I'm glad I can look back and say thank you. Thank you to my grandparents and parents for guiding me to the love and ultimate comforter, the, the Lord. My bad. Life has almost always been rocky, inconsistent, and doubt, downright and unpredictable. Sorry. <laughs> so I always found myself asking him why why he put me and my family through all this pain, what's next? And in all honesty, it had me second guessing him and it made me unsure. So I asked myself, what's changed? Why now? And the answer is nothing has changed except for me. I finally hit a point in my life where I've realized his hand has always been on me. He has never abandoned me nor my family, not once. And that everything, that everything has a reason. 
He's the need to always, or he's always had a plan for me since I was brought into this world. So why am I ha always having a need to have things my way and the way I want them? God is always reminding me that I am human and will continue to have moments such as that. What I do know now is God's plan is clearly his plan for me, or yeah, right? And it is significantly better and beyond anything I am capable of comprehending. So with that, I'm now ready to publicly proclaim my faith as I faithfully trust and follow in the path he is guiding me on to live for him from now until I reach his kingdom and then some. <laughs> All right. And uh, her verse. I also have a little passage that just resonates and I'd like to share. Psalms 143, 11 through 12. For your name's sake, Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness, bring me out of, the, out of trouble. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies, destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. I'm Dad. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. And I baptize you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good to see you. I can't see all of you, but you can see up here. And we're going to celebrate. There we Hey! Y'all came to church today. Thanks for coming. We're going to celebrate together and worship the Lord through baptism. If you're a guest here and you're not quite sure what baptism really is all about, let me just briefly let you know. There's nothing special about this water except it's warm, and that's a good thing. Today, Amy is about to declare through baptism her relationship with Jesus. She's put her trust in Jesus. She's been forgiven of her past, her sins, her future mistakes. Everything is under the blood of Christ. Today, she will be baptized, immersed in the water coming up as a symbol of new life in Christ. And that's worth a party kind of reaction. You know what I'm saying? All right. No, no I mean like a... a a uh, Seahawks won the Super Bowl. Everybody's in heaven together. Either one of those, but mainly the second one kind of celebration. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's invite Amy in. Come on in, Amy. Let's give her a hand. All the way down. Just flip around there. That's not too bad, is it? You got family here too, and they're all. If you ever wonder where family and friends are, they're the ones with the cameras going like this. There we go. Now I'm going to read Amy's testimony. Now this isn't long. I'm going to do my best to go slow because I, I really think someone in the room needs to hear this today. All right? <clears throat> Here we go. I'm going to see if I can make it. As I revisited the details of my past in silence with God, unknowingly by my side, I see I was lost, but now I am found. As I look back on my life, I am now peaceful, finally ready to accept help and walk in this new chapter God has intended all along. I trust in you, God, and with the many members of my new family here at Grace. Here's my story. I thought I was in purgatory. I couldn't find peace in the chaos. I couldn't trust anyone truly I believed if I said it, it would literally happen to me. I struggled to forgive and was full of hate. These days I am learning to listen to God and daily follow Him. As I am trusting in Him, He has awakened the part of me I have always been searching for. I think that's just the wholeness that comes in Jesus, amen? Surrendering daily to the Creator of all. God has called me to action since I now understand what choice is. The loss of my father and sister was eventually replaced with his love and true reasoning beyond me. The abuse, rape, incest, drugs, prostitution, and even adultery has allowed me to relate more to others than I could imagine because he has now cleansed me.
My attitudes and thoughts are no longer dark. God has given me purpose. Today, I now see myself as a child of God, a mother with purpose dependent on him for everything I do. Hmm. Second Colossians 8 through 12. I can't see through my glasses. Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies, their wrong and shallow answers built on men's thoughts and ideas instead of on what Christ has said. For in Christ there is all of God in a human body. So you, you have everything when you have Christ and you are filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. When you come in Christ, he sets you free from your evil desires, not by a bodily operation, the baptisms of your souls. For in baptism, you see how your old evil nature died with him and was buried with him. And then you came up out of death with him into a new life because you trusted the word of the, of the mighty God who raised Christ from the dead. Can I get an amen? Yeah. God knows exactly what each of us need. All glory belongs to God. Let's do this. Amy, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Goodness. Thank goodness. You know, we're going to baptize her, and if we're not celebrating what God's done in our lives, along with Amy celebrating what God's done in hers through a relationship with Jesus, then we shouldn't have came to church today, I'm telling you. It is my privilege today, Amy, to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.